Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to do some myth busting and talk about some of the common misconceptions with non-verbal children. I am the mother of a non-verbal four-year-old and for that reason I feel very strongly that we don't propagate these myths and not assume things about them or their development or their thought processes. Verbal ability directly correlates with intellectual ability. A child who cannot speak cannot understand verbal language. I think this is probably the biggest myth out there with non-verbal children. There are many, many children who do have the ability to understand and who can understand so much of what you say, even though they may not be able to express themselves. Some children with autism have a big gap between their receptive language and their expressive language, and this is absolutely the case with my son. He has always been able to follow directions when he's in the mood to follow them. Cognitively, he is very able. However, his expressive abilities, and not just in terms of speech, but in terms of non-verbal communication, he didn't point to things until he was two and a half. He didn't communicate through gestures or expression or those non-verbal means of communication that comes so naturally to most children. However, I'm pleased to report that at four years old, he now uses an AAC device on his iPad really well. Um, he understands the purpose of communication. He uses gestures to communicate. However, he remains non-verbal. That is not an indication of his cognitive ability and it's really important for me as his mother to get that across to people. If a child is not speaking by age five, they will never speak. This is a common myth that I hear a lot, um, and it has been debunked by research. I will link that research down below. But people seem to think there's a, there's a timeline on the brain, and if you don't achieve speech by a certain age, then you're never going to achieve speech. Anecdotally, I have heard of so many children, I have known children in real life begin speaking at five, six, seven, eight. Autistic children and children whose brains are wired differently are on a completely unique developmental pathway that nobody can predict. I think the key here is to just go with whatever communication method the child finds the easiest at this moment in time and bear in mind that it can change at any point. A child who communicates through AAC may in a few weeks time want to start communicating through speech. You've just really got to go with the child and follow their lead. Non-verbal children who do not yet understand verbal language don't understand anything. Now in the beginning I spoke about how children who are non-verbal may still be able to understand a lot of language and a lot of what you say. Now in some cases I'm not denying that that isn't the case. Sometimes children struggle with receptive language as well. They may struggle to understand your words and what they mean. However, a child that doesn't understand verbal language doesn't mean to say they don't understand anything. General understanding is about so much more than just un understanding the words that come out of people's mouths. Understanding is about understanding your environment, understanding how things work, understanding the patterns in things, the routines, how things work together. If you were picked up right now as you are and plonked on an island somewhere, you do not know their language, you do not understand any of their customs or social rules, does that mean you don't understand anything? No, you've got so much understanding. It's just that you are struggling to understand the environment that you've been put into. Regular measures of IQ and other typical assessments and frameworks aimed at deciphering the cognitive ability of a child gives an accurate developmental picture of a neurodivergent child's capabilities. So what does that mean? In a nutshell, I think we think that IQ tests and uh, developmental assessment frameworks in the UK, we have the EYFS framework. Um, and they'll give you bands and scores and they'll put them at the level of a nine month old or you know they'll give them a score, a score in percentiles or a numerical value. Please, please, please do not fixate on these. They are not a good measure of a neurodivergent child's abilities. Why is that? One, because they heavily rely on verbal language and typical means of communication. Two, they heavily rely on a child wanting to demonstrate what they know and a lot of ch children, particularly autistic children, do not have that same motivation to show off what they know. Sometimes they simply just don't see the point or they don't want to comply with what you're trying to do with them. And three, 
these measurement frameworks are often made up of really arbitrary criteria, random things that you have to score to move up to a next band or a next level and it doesn't actually reflect that child's abilities as a whole anyway. Please, please don't get caught up in scores. I don't believe children or anybody, anybody at all should be quantitatively assessed like that anyway. Focus on your child's strengths, build upon them and help guide them in the areas they are struggling with, give them the freedom to develop at their own pace and you will see results over time. The next myth is like split into two parts but it relates to the same thing so I'm going to group them together. Children who don't speak are physically unable to speak or children who don't communicate verbally but show remarkable skills in other areas are choosing not to speak. Okay, so this is something I have with my own son. He was reading at two and a half. He is incredibly skilled in word recognition, numeracy, fine motor skills. He has a great skill set. However, he does not speak at all, no words. So many people have suggested that maybe that's because he's choosing not to speak. Dexter, however, has motor planning difficulties that mean actually producing speech is very, very difficult for him, and that tends to be overlooked in a lot of autistic children. On the flip side of that, you have children in whom there is absolutely no physical problem. They can produce speech in the same way that neurotypical children can produce speech. It's just that they are yet to master communication as a concept. Maybe they are still finding out what the benefit of communication is for them. Sometimes in these children, if we help them see the benefit of communication, the words will follow. A child who can speak well, or has gone from being previously non-verbal to fully verbal, cannot possibly autistic, or they have outgrown their autism. I see this so often. I see parents where their child has had a um, very, very limited communication and suddenly they have had a language explosion, they are talking to communicate, they are expressing their needs well and the parents start questioning, wow, maybe this isn't even autism. We really have to be careful that we don't set the bar very, very low for autistic children. It is very normal for an autistic child to have a language explosion a bit later on than their neurotypical peers. But that doesn't mean to say they won't spend their entire life experiencing the world slightly differently to their neurotypical peers. It's important that we don't just look at the words that are being spoken, but also the way in which speech is used, because there are usually differences there between autistic children and their peers. Speaking is the only valuable form of communication. I hate this one. I hate when professionals push, 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 push speech. We are predominantly verbal communicators. It is the universally recognised method of communication for the world we live in. Of course it's going to be easier if your child can speak. However, all forms of communication are valid and all forms of communication should be recognised, respected and celebrated. My son is no less because he communicates with an AAC device than if he communicated through spoken words. What is sad is when people try to force speech in a child for whom a different method of communication at this moment in time may make their life so much easier. I could force my son to make sounds for different things but he would not be able to communicate half of the things that he can tell me via his device. That would lead to frustration, that would lead to meltdowns, that would be taking away his basic human right of communication. If a child is going to be a verbal communicator, giving them an alternative means of communication whilst their brain is developing that skill is not going to inhibit that. There is evidence to show that alternative augmented communication actually can help children acquire verbal language if that is a possibility for them, if their brain is wired that way. That's not to say that you cannot work with speech alongside. We do vocal play exercises with our son. We want to encourage vocalizations, but we do not force that as his method of communication because that would be un unfair to him right now. One thing I found very helpful as the mother of a child who does not communicate verbally is to look up non-speaking adults. 
There are so many non-speaking adults out there that are writing blogs and giving speeches through um, RPM and typing and it really just serves as a reminder what you see on the outside isn't necessarily what's going on on the inside. Please check out these non-speaking resources that I will link below. I promise you they will you will leave them feeling inspired and hopeful. Children who are non-speaking and who are intellectually challenged have nothing to offer the world and are less valuable than their higher functioning peers. First of all, I hate functioning labels for many reasons. I find them to be offensive and I find them to just be useless for, for many reasons. They are not an accurate description of an individual's challenges and strengths. But I use them here to highlight an example of this myth. Of course there are children who are non-speaking and who also have an intellectual disability. There seems to be this idea that children who fit into that description are less valuable than their peers, are a worst case scenario, are not going to bring joy, who are just going to bring struggles. Let me tell you, everybody in the world has something to offer the world whatever their strengths and challenges are. Ability does not equal worth. I think we need to shift more to a mindset where all children are seen as wonderful additions to the world and are celebrated as such. Speech therapy gets non-verbal children speaking. I will admit that I thought this. In the beginning, Dexter was not even two and he had his speech therapy assessment and I thought, this is it. Somebody is gonna come into our home and get those words out of Dexter. Um, and that, obviously, if you're a speech professional, if you're a speech pathologist or a speech therapist, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but in our experience, that is not at all what speech therapists are there to do. If your child is choosing verbal communication themselves and are struggling with pronunciation or you know, communicating their thoughts and feelings correctly, then yes, of course, that's what a speech therapist will do. But if your child is entirely non-verbal, what a speech therapist will tend to do is work on the basis for interaction and communication and engagement. They will work on those building blocks of communication that come way before speech. Once that child has those building blocks of communication, they will then look at the best communication system to suit them. In our case, it was not a verbal communication system. It was an alternative communication system that involved visuals. Initially, it was PECs. Uh, a communication book and then finally is high tech AAC. These are speech and language professionals and language can be communicated in a whole range of methods and means. If you have a young child and you really desperately want them to start speaking and you have speech therapy planned, just bear in mind that you cannot force a child to speak who is not developmentally there, but you can help all children gain communication skills over time. The long-term goals for non-verbal children are very different to those of verbal children. There's also this idea that you can sort of shoot for the stars with verbal children and, you know, work with them in a much more productive way. And yet non-verbal children, you need to set the bar low almost. I'm going to get quite philosophical here. As parents, surely we all want the same goals for all of our children. We want them to be happy, we want them to find their place in society, we want them to feel included and loved. We want to pro provide the accommodations that will make them feel like their life means something. But predominantly the happiness thing, we all want them to be happy, right? These should be the goals, regardless of ability. You don't need me to tell you how lucky you are to have your child, you already know. We are all so incredibly lucky and in the, the way the world is set up and the way the system is set up, it, it takes you away from that sometimes and you start going down a, a different thought process, but please never lose sight of the fact that we are so very lucky. You can't force an autistic child to be typical, you can't force a child who cannot speak to speak, but what you can do is change the way you look at things, shift your own mindset and learn how to live a really happy, fulfilled family life whoever your child is and whatever the capabilities are. So that's my discussion for the day. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed listening. If you are interested in following our journey, please join us over on Instagram. If you are interested in connecting with other people in your same situation, please go over to our Facebook group. And I have some fantastic collaborations in 
the pipeline so please stay tuned for those and hit subscribe so you get a little notification when a new video comes on thank you again for watching and i will see you soon bye